the world of No Not Them, where the host Mike Nichols and Chris Brown invite you to join them on a unique journey through the entertainment industry. Contrary to expectations, we are not the renowned EGOT winner Mike Nichols and R&B singer Chris Brown. We're just a bunch of white guys. In the show, we're going to provide distinctive insights into the entertainment world, offering a perspective from two people who aren't the ones you were thinking of only can. Get ready for a fresh take on the entertainment industry with no, not them. Mike Nichols, how are you? That was a weird new intro. I'm. I was so used to like the quippy little like da 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 da, da and I exist. <laughs> not that like I was like, I was like, this is new. Twenty twenty four, new year, new us, new year, <laughs> new, new us. us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. How's life been? It's been uh, it's almost been two months since we last uh sat down and chatted for an indispensable amount of time i mean it it's been a minute um and like it would not be filming if i was not suffering from some state of ailment um so that's always exciting and thrilling um uh, no. If, no, if you're tuning good. in for the I I hate Taylor Swift uh, bandwagon, uh, you're not going to get that this time <laughs> because Stop. Mike Nichols seems to be actually on uh, you know proper medication here for two seconds. <laughs> no, I'm not medicated yet. <laughs> I'm on Allegra. She great. Um, <laughs> no, listen. Why are you trying to get everybody to cancel me? It's like your hobby. I think. 2024 some things don't change <laughs> how are you how's your how's your i don't know if canada has a life liberty pursuit of happiness thing but how's that yeah, for true north Canadian? strong and free true north how's strong, true and free? North strong <laughs> how's your true north strong and free we are good uh it's been a busy fucking two months i will be the first to admit that it has been uh just a whirlwind of trying to keep up with everything going on in the world and keeping up with the everything going on in the entertainment world which i will be the first to admit was not a good <laughs> month for me because i've been focusing on the show uh expanding on the other shows that i do so it has been just jam-packed and we're sort of getting ready to do a lot of traveling over the next few months so we're trying to make sure that i have the proper flights booked and the proper hotels booked so that has been my month and a half and then dealing with clients i've been hosting uh sort of panels that are across alberta so i've been doing a lot over the last almost two months vibes <laughs> so true north strong and free true north strong free so we have a lot to unpack, but we want to start because it is award season, as Michael so eloquently pointed out to me at the beginning of the uh, interview, well, not interview, at the beginning of the uh, show, uh, before we hit the record button. It is award season, so we're going to probably be talking about the award season for the majority of the show today. So I'm just going to be up front and be blunt about that. It is award season, so what do we should do on the entertainment show about hosted by two white people who are gay? Talk about the award seasons, of course. Not the best dress because, God forbid, Chris actually talks about fashion in this world because his best thing about fashion is Old Navy. So with that, let's talk about the Oscars because they are the most prominent story that has come out in the last probably like five days since recording this episode. Um, I want to get your initial reactions, Michael. What did you think of this year's uh, Oscar nominations? We're going to talk about the... Oh, God, he has a piece of paper. <laughs> I have the ballot. I'm already working my way through, like, getting all the films and things. I'm a crazy person. It's fine. I wouldn't say that, but okay. <laughs> so what was your initial thoughts on the Oscar nominations that came out earlier this week as we're recording this episode? I feel like a lot of it was very predictable, but then there was a lot of, like, very weird picks that kind of occurred um i just feel like there was it was like a good mix of like very predictable but some of the snubs were big like in some years the snubs are like okay it's yeah i can see it but this time there was a couple of very obvious like oh we just not gonna do that got it that came up which we're gonna talk about the snubs here in a few seconds but to me, I, I I couldn't agree more, and I think this is the first time, 2024, we're starting a new year, so of course we're going to be in agreement with some things, but it was kind of predictable. 
Like yeah. there was nothing here that I went, oh, this is a new movie I've never heard of. Every movie that I had, like usually, like look at last year, right? We had Bill Nye from, uh, uh, I forget the name of the movie that he was nominated for, for Best Actor, kind of in the middle of nowhere. You're like, oh, what's this movie? I had never heard of it. It had come out of the BAFTAs. But this is basically transposing the Screen Actors Guild, the Emmys, the Golden Globes, or not the Emmys, but the Golden Globes, and basically cut and pasting the nominees. And I'm not sure if that's because 2023 had just a horrible year for movies because of the Screen Actors Guild and they pushed a lot of things back, but it didn't really impress me this much, that much this year for the Oscar nominations to be completely blunt. Well, I'm just shocked because my husband and I started watching. Normally we have like a very crazy long list of things to watch. Most of the films, if you watch the best picture, you pretty much can hit every everything in a single category most yeah. of the categories so it's like that feels weird to me like normally the acting categories are populated with like things that aren't even in the best picture category there's only the one part there's only one movie that the actors got nominated and the best picture didn't naiad and color purple oh yeah color purple i forgot about color purple yep so, which is weird because like you said traditionally there's like about four or five but this year it seems like, again maybe because oh and rustin sorry okay so three so just ignore what i said at the beginning of the this segment because i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about and i didn't do my research prior to recording this. i so, clearly yeah. didn't either i'm looking down and going like oh wait no that one too okay so you know so let's just reverse oh i can't believe there's only three movies that weren't nominated for best picture that were nominated for actor and actresses jesus mother and joseph play with me here come on, come on. vibes we're vibing we're going um, we're riding before we talk about the sort of the big six categories the directors the picture or the actor actress supporting i want to talk about the one big controversy prior to the oscars being coming out and that is adapted screenplay and i oh, i saw yeah. this so there was a big push that barbie was going to be nominated for best original screenplay but the Oscars and all its Oscar Academy wisdom decided, no, you're going to be judged in the adapted screenplay. What was your take on this? Because when I looked, when I saw this, I was like, I, I see where the Academy's coming from, but I don't understand the rationale behind it because there's no like book Barbie. It's about a doll for fuck's sakes. I'm sorry. By watch that here. logic, by that logic though, Maestro should be in the adapted screenplay. Like it, there's no book that it was adapted from. There's no book Barbie was adapted from, but it's based on a commonly known IP, commonly known story. Yeah. Hence why it, it was like they purposefully were like trying to sabotage that category to make it a more competitive category versus original screenplay. If Barbie was in there would have won. like point and blank period. Yeah, Whereas I if have, it's an adapted, it's got more competition. In a few minutes here because once we've talked about the all the awards, <clears throat> I'm going to lay out some predictions here just in, because we usually do our prediction show a week before. We're going to do the actual who, we're, who we think is, but I'm going to make a major prediction at the end of this segment after we're done talking about this. Um, Unhinged. I'm, I'm ready. I didn't... Looking, so documentary features, documentary short films, the live action shorts, the live, best sh uh, animated shorts. These are ones that I'm actually interested in watching because I will be blunt. I've seen all but one movie in the best, uh, the top six categories. And that's the color purple because I just haven't been able to find it in a streaming service or a platform that I can uh, make it randomly available to me. That being said, the those four categories that I just talked about, I'm actually kind of interested because there seems to be some that are kind of intriguing in my opinion the shorts yeah the shorts and even the documentaries i watched a ton of the shorts last night um i really like the documentary shorts this year okay. the, i've been able to, to abc's of book banning is i want to say on hulu uh barbara of little rock and last repair shop are both on youtube and the last repair shop is on disney plus Oh, yeah, The Last Repair Shop's on Disney+, Plus. Uh, Barbara of Little Rock's on YouTube, sorry. Um, and ABC's A Book Burning is on Disney+, Plus in Canada for those <laughs> Canadian followers. Perfect. If you're like, outside of Canada, 
I don't know. Fucking find it out for yourself. It's called Google. I think it's on Hulu. I do think it's, it's on Google. Hulu, the ABC's book. Um, and then Nai Nai and Waipo is going to be on Disney Plus next month, allegedly. Okay. And the island in between? Where'd you find uh, that? I couldn't find it. I'm okay. trying. Um, okay. But the one thing I will say, I know we're not like talking about snub snubs, but like the animated short everyone was predict, like everyone was predicting to win was the hundred years of Disney animation and it didn't even get nominated. So like that category is fully up in the air right now because everyone's predicted winner was that and it ain't even there. I think a lot, like usually these four are the ones that are the traditional and I don't want to say this rudely because I think all their the craftsmanship that went into every single one of these films, even if it's a short, is wonderful. I think it's traditionally, how do I put it without being rude, a throwaway category. And I say that because the majority <laughs> of people, I would assume, who are voting members of the Academy are not probably sitting down and watching every single one of these. I just... In the short period of time that you have between now and the Oscars, you probably don't, or the voting date, you probably don't have it. I hope they do. I'm going to try my best to try and find every single one of these. I just do not expect it to be um, one that's contentious. That's the issue I find with the shorts. It's so hard to get access to all of them. Like Unless you're an Academy most, member and they send it to you. <laughs> most And they most of the time they don't. Like really? it, it, it's one of those, it's one of those things like I, they, uh, a local place, uh, we have a local small theater that will do all the shorts as a like watch through thing. I'm thinking I might just do that this year and pay the ticket price to go sit in a theater and watch them back to back like that because they're just so difficult to get and to find. I feel like every year I'm like struggling the most to find anywhere that I can stream these, watch these, like, Every once in a while, they'll pop up on YouTube and they'll be there for like an hour and a half before YouTube takes them down. And I'm like, God bless whoever tried to put that on there. <laughs> like, <clears throat> it's, it's, and a lot of the times the shorts don't actually get put on streaming until after the Academy Awards are done. Uh, Apple TV did that last year with, I think, the boy, the wolf, the fox, the horse, the hen, the cockadoodle do, whatever it was. That very long one that actually won the yeah. Oscars, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <laughs> Can we all just agree right now we know who's going to win Best International Feature Film because they were nominated for Best Picture? <laughs> I mean, and from what I've heard, Zone of Interest is incredible. There was a lot of um, international and foreign language films that got nominated for Best Picture, though. Yeah, but usually, traditionally... Oh, yeah. Oh, Zone of Interest is fully winning. I'm just shocked <laughs> Anatomy of a Fall is not in International Feature Film. Me? I, I am as well. I am extremely mm. as well. And um, oh, what's, perfect day. Perfect day? Is it perfect day? Yeah. Past perfect lives? Days. No, perfect days. The Japanese film. Because I watched it. It is a fantastic movie. Highly recommended. And I thought it was going to be, and that's, we're, I know we're talking about snubs a little bit here already, but I think that was snubbed for best picture. Interesting. I've not really jumped into the international feature films yet. Um, I was mostly waiting because I just, there's so many countries and I'm not about to watch just a bunch of random ass international films that have been no clear shot of if it's nominated or not, because I don't have that much time. True, true that. Um, so we had a sort of record breaking. Uh, John Williams was nominated for his like 98th millionth fucking Oscar for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny for best score. Mm -hmm. So I, I I think he said he has going, he's uh, retiring, but Robbie Robertson, God bless him, Canadian, uh, posthumously nominated for Killers of the Flower Moon. So there's going to be a, probably a talk <laughs> in the best original score. Uh, best original song. This one that actually, I I've, I actually listened to all the songs prior to, uh, the well not prior but prior to this recording. Um, there's some good ones. There's some interesting ones, and with everything that went on at the, I think it was the Golden Globes. The Globes. Where Ken won. Oh yeah, Ken won. Not what was it made for? Yeah, not. Like, yeah, and a lot of people were like, what's this all about? So I think there's going to be a race there, or we could see a split. 
Overall, everything else, pretty straightforward. There was nothing in the costumes, film editing, cinematography, hair and makeup that I was shocked about. I'm I'm happy that Maestro was not nominated for uh, makeup and hairstyling. That's just me. Oh, it was. Never mind. <laughs> um, we're gonna have another makeup and hair. Uh, yeah, Ma Maestro is there. Maestro, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things, which means one of those movies is going to win an acting category, a leading actor category, probably because usually the makeup and hairstyle co-wins with an acting category and it, I don't know why that happens it just does um, which I think it's gonna be poor things with Emma Stone is my initial gut well understandable okay um, overall it doesn't seem like there wasn't any big shockers uh, I, I had never heard of Godzilla minus one for best visual effects I am so happy that Napoleon was nominated for best visual effects God bless really? him God bless him because I watched the movie and I went oh god uh, Ridley Scott has gone crazy and he is no longer the gladiator movie that we came to love <laughs> The, Napoleon's the one I feel like everyone I've spoken to is like that got a bunch of nominations and I'm like I guess I've had so many people who've watched Godzilla minus one that have like turned it it liking it into a cult that are like so mad that it only got for visual effects because they're like it should be in best picture it should be in best international film and I'm like slow down I haven't seen it yet but like slow down it's a Godzilla movie <laughs> the Godzilla movie it doesn't make that much okay maybe it was best foreign film anyway okay we have taken a lot of time and I know our listeners and our viewers will probably want us to talk about the top six sure we're gonna go in order here because there's one category that I think is going to be very contentious on the show so I want to start with best supporting actress so Emily Blunt, Danielle Brook, uh, Brooks, America Fiera, uh, Jodie Foster, and Devine Joy Randolph. Hopefully I pronounced their, their names all correctly. I think I did. If I didn't, I apologize. Um, there is some pretty good talent here. And yeah. I don't see anyone on this list besides America Fiera, who I was shocked Ferreira. at. Ferreira. Ferreira, whatever. Ferrari, who I was shocked at. I honestly, I look at that list and I go, yep, yeah, that's the list I would have chosen too. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think there's definitely something to be said about Rosalind <laughs> Pike in Saltburn. I really do think there's something to be said that she had a place in this list. I'm going to be very, very real. I probably would take, and I love her. I love her. I would have taken out Emily Blunt or Jodie Foster for Rosamund Pike. And it's, I, listen, love both of them, thought they were both great, would have put Rosamund Pike in there. And the fact Saltburn got nothing is mind boggling to me because especially since it was on so many like media publications, top 10 movie of 2023 list for it to get zero is just... It doesn't make sense with my fantasy, as Valentina would say. Yeah, because your fantasy is either <laughs> the graveyard scene or the bathtub scene. Which no, scene neither is my fantasy. <laughs> I, it's the ending when he was fully naked. Hey, man, of course, seeing another man naked. No, I just, <laughs> I just thought that movie was so brilliantly executed from acting to costume to production to storyline that like, I just, I do not know how it did not get even one nomination. Um, the Academy hates Emerald. You hated it. I, I know you hated it. Despised it with a passion. Literally turned it off after you said, have you gotten to the bathroom scene? Yep. You Great. didn't finish it? Horrible acting across the board. Richard Grant was horrible in it. The main character, Barry, whatever the hell his name is, was horrible in it. I did not like the movie at all. I would have given it a one star if we were still doing Night of the Movies. 
What, do you want me to lie? Oh, it was a great no. Movie. Oh, I just so I just so hardcore disagree. I just I really I would have put Roseman Pike in supporting actress. That's just my journey, and that's the journey I'm going on right now. Right. And I would have put it in over Emily Blunt or Jodie Foster, whom I both thought were incredible. I just think Roseman was better. And that's my fantasy. Sorry. Uh, best Supporting Actor, uh, Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction, Robert De Niro for Killers of a Flower Moon, of the Flower Moon, sorry, Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling as Barbie, and Mark Ruffalo as Poor Th- in Poor Things. I'm shocked at two of these, uh, to be completely blunt. One. Who are you is, shocked at? Uh, Mark Ruffalo. I didn't think he okay. was good. I don't think he was good in the movie. And Sterling K. Brown. <laughs> I watched the movie. I liked the movie. I just didn't think he was going to get nominated for it because I thought, okay, there might be someone else out there. But I actually, because I thought uh, the movie May, December, the uh, gentleman, the one who married Charles uh, Melton. Yes. I thought he should have been nominated over Sterling K. Brown, but that's just me. That is my only snub in the best supporting actor category. Overall though, I'm pretty content. You kind of see where the winds are blowing in this category, as they traditionally do in the best supporting uh, categories. But I would say, yeah, I'm okay. Uh, pull out De Niro yeah. and put in Charles Melton. De Niro was fucking all. I hated that movie. I thought he was fucking garbage in it. I'm sorry. Uh, pull out De Niro, put Charles Melton in. Pull out Mark Ruffalo, put Willem Dafoe in from Poor Things. That would have been what I would have done. Okay, I can see Willem Dafoe over Mark Ruffalo. <clears throat> I thought Willem Dafoe was incredible in that movie. I just Mark Ruffalo is fine, but I but think he wasn't like good, if... right? He wasn't like, oh my god, I'm watching you. You're like, I'm watching Mark Ruffalo right now. Willem Dafoe, you're like, no, like I, I just I've seen Mark Ruffalo's asshole how many times now? Like, it's fine, it's lovely. The acting was fine. I just think in terms of if we're gonna do one supporting actor. I think Willem Dafoe should have gotten it. I think Willem Dafoe's performance was so much better. Um, I do think, you know, Charles Melton really just was spectacular in May, December. And like, I, I, the I'm surprised perform- Portman didn't get nominated for Best Supporting Actress in that. Or Julianne Moore. Julianne, no, Moore, Julianne I- Moore, I think, is supporting and Natalie is, um, they went in for a lead. Oh, okay. Well, either way i'm surprised neither one of them like the movie was agreed well done like oh the movie was brilliant like especially the end you're like holy like natalie just goes crazy at the but anyway anyway it was a good yeah it was a year of sexual exploration in the movie (laughs) (laughs) it was a it was a year of male penis and uh sort of so pseudo masturbation by natalie portman (laughs) love Love. Need more of, thank you. Love, love. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn to Best Actor now because I think Best Actress is going to be a shit show. Okay. <laughs> best Actor, Bradley Cooper for Ma- Maestro, Coleman Domingo, I apologize. Domingo. Preston, Domingo. Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, Cillian Murphy for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. I have no complaints about this category. Um, who... I think Bradley Cooper is going to be fucked, but I think I have no issues with this category. Oh, no, I don't think Bradley Cooper's winning it. I think that Bradley Cooper was the odds on favorite at the beginning. And then once people saw the holdovers, there, I think it's going to come down to Paul Giamatti or uh, Killian Murphy. Yeah. Is it Killian or Cillian? Killian, from what I've heard. Okay, I guess you don't watch The Great North. Never mind. <laughs> they have no. a full episode where they try to try to decipher what his actual name is, and no one knows. It's actually quite fun. Great North with uh, whatever I, the guy's name is. Yeah, I haven't seen American Fiction yet, but like Jeffrey Wright, I love him as an act. I love him as an actor, and so I'm like very okay with him being there. Just yeah. from knowing him as a performer, I'm like sold. A lot of first time nominees in this category. As it should be. Yes, I would agree with that, my kind sir. I doff my cap to you, my kind sir. <laughs> okay. 
let's talk about the elephant in the room because you know everyone else is so why not this show best actress annette benning for nyada uh lily gladstone for killers of the flower moon sandra huller anatomy of a fall carrie mulligan mastro emma stone poor things for those who are keeping score, there is no Barbie. There is no Margot Robbie in this. Are you shocked at that? Don't cancel me. Are we going to agree on this? Don't cancel me. I'm, I'm not, I'm shocked she's not there. But I, I think that when you're looking at all of the leading performances this year, Margot Robbie wouldn't have been one I would have wanted to probably put there. And it's nothing, nothing shade against the movie or nothing shameful against her. Cause I do think with director, when we get there, I'm going to think that w there was a big snub there, but I, I think there are so many other actresses, uh, specifically Fantasia Barino in the color purple, um, Celine song or no, Greta Lee, Greta Lee in past lives. Uh, I think that those two women I would have put in this category. Um, I also am really, everyone's saying, oh look, nothing from Barbie got nominated except for Ken. And it's like, are we just gonna fully ignore America Ferreira, a Latina woman getting nominated for this movie? Like it just, like, I loved, I loved Barbie. I loved the movie. I think that Margot Robbie was great in it. I just think there were better performances. Um, I think when you look at the list given, Annette Benning is the one I love. I like Nyad. I would have taken Annette Benning out and maybe thrown in Fantasia Barino or Greta Lee. Um, on, I have not Susan, seen that. We need the Susan, Susan Lucci story of 2024. We need Benning to get nominated for something just to get it ripped up from her hands. Um, yeah, I've not seen that Anatomy of a Fall yet. So I think Sandra Huller is the one that people are looking at that stole Margot's nomination, but it's like, Barbie was a great movie. Margot did a great job. She just got outplayed by folks. And it's, it's a shame, but it's just, it's the industry. And that's just my opinion. And I can, and you can tell me I'm wrong and I'm okay with being wrong. I, and I'm not saying I hated the movie. I'm just thinking that when I, with all the movies I've seen so far, I think she just got beat. I agree. I am so happy you and I agree on this. Because every time I hear people complaining, and don't get me wrong, she was fantastic in the movie. I probably would say yay. She was probably one of the reasons why it did so well. But I look at it and I say, which one of these actresses would you remove then? Who do you think is not worthy enough to do it? Have you seen Anatomy of a Fall? And the majority of people who I ask say, no, I haven't. So I'm making a judgment call on things that I do not know. So wait till you see Anatomy of a Fall, which is fucking fantastic. Spoiler alert, there is going to be subtitles. <laughs> Spoiler alert, it is fun. But I am looking at these and I'm going, I'm content with this. I You have a two-horse race in this category right now, Emma Stone and Lily Gladstone. I think it's going to be very competitive. I would not be shocked if a third person wins this because there's a vote split because they are two very strong uh, candidates. Yeah. But overall, I, mean, I, would, I would even say the same thing about Best Actor as well, right? Paul Giamatti and Cillian Murphy are two very strong candidates to win Best Actor this year. Either one of them, I would be okay with. Either one of Gl yeah. Lily Gladstone or Emma Stone, I'd be okay with. I have my preference right now, but overall, like if my gut feeling had to tell, if I had to say who I was, would vote for today, I would know. But I'm content with this. This is not a shocking five people for me, but that's just. And then I think that this then maybe leads us to a conversation for a lead role, for a conversation about maybe category expansion. Yes, like they did with the best picture, go from five to like seven or five to 10. I don't know. 
Maybe seven <laughs> is the appropriate number. I don't think 10 is because I think 10 would just be sitting there for three hours listening to people ramble on the list of names. And yeah. honestly, it's already long enough. I don't want to sit through another four hour. Uh, like if I'm going to see a three hour thing, I, I, I'd watch Oppenheimer. No, I agree. I'm watch a three hour Academy broadcast. That's just me. Um, best director. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more contentious, I think, because you and I will be able to disagree on this. Best director, Justine Tourette, Anatomy of a Fall, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Jorgis Lanthimos, uh, Poor Things, and Jonathan Glazer from The Zone of Interest. Again, Greta was not nominated for this category. Uh, Michael, I am assuming you are shocked, you are appalled, you are gooped, gagged, and gone. I mean, not shocked and appalled. The Academy is the Academy and they do what they want and they have their one singular woman in there. I think it would have been a much stronger category and a much more competitive category had we put in Celine Song for Direction of Past Lives and Greta Gerwig for Barbie. Um, and you're going to ask me what I would take out. I'm going to be real with you. I would take out Killers of the Flower Moon in a heartbeat. Um, and I would, I think, take out Oppenheimer. I would have taken both those movies out. I thought that they were they, there was great moments. I just, mm, that's what I would do. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so we're going to get to the big reveal here in two seconds. But I'm going to disagree with you, Billy, on this. Um, I say that because someone of Greek descent, great, great movie, poor things, amazing movie, poor things, fantastic movie, totally can stay. Interest, love it, great movie, beautifully directed, got amazing things out of their characters. Um, I haven't seen it yet. For me, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> So I, I Killers of the Flower Moon. I may agree with you a little bit on that one, but I wouldn't have put Barbie. I would have put Past Lives in it. Uh, well, yes. That so that's where I would have. I don't. It it, it harkens back to the old uh, Barbie. She was good in it. Margot was great in it, but it wasn't the best. It wasn't awe inspiring to me. Greta did a great job. Loved her. Loved her work in Lady Bird. But I just look at it and I go. I look at these five movies. One of them I can see moved out. If there was top seven, maybe be nominated. But I do not think it was the best directed movie of the year. My personal opinion. I don't think it's the best directed, but I think it's one of five. I think it's definitely a top five. I would put Barbie, especially with the cultural moment and like how well like navigated it was. I've not seen Anatomy of a Fall or Zone of Interest to know if I want to take them out yet. I may may change my mind and say pull them out, but I just felt Oppenheimer was so slow paced. Killers of the Flower Moon was so slow paced, and that's not good directing. If I'm sitting there so bored out of my fucking mind, like that's not good directing. That's not good editing, and like that can, and then it gets both those categories. Both of them got both those categories, I believe, editing and. Because it has directing, and then where's editing on here? Yeah, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppen like, you can't have a movie that slow paced where everyone, even people that are like, I loved Oppenheimer, they were like, yeah, there was moments I was really bored. And people who loved Killers of the Flower Moon that were like, yeah, there was moments I was really bored. I'm like, that's not a good direction. No part of Barbie, when I watched it, did I feel this is really slow paced and I'm like needing to check my watch. And that's like, that's a directing thing. Like it, and same with I would even put uh, Emerald Fennel for Saltburn in this category. I would I would have an all women's category, and and pull out all the men from it. And I again I don't know Zone of Interest. I don't know Anatomy of a Fall. Um, so I I may change my mind on that. I've heard Anatomy of a Fall is fucking incredible. So I'm I probably would keep that hands down. But like I'm just Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer. Why, like. And that there's people who are upset Leonardo DiCaprio didn't get nominated. He wasn't even that good. No, sorry. I, no, no, no. Like he, like he is rightly deserved to be out of this category. <laughs> that like <clears throat> category. He was just a horrible part. Like yeah. I would have given Brendan Fraser, and he had like ten minutes of screen time in that movie. <laughs> a better ch chance, but anyway. Um, 
So there you go. It's going to be interesting to see who you actually pick at the end of this month when we only have these five candidates to choose from. Um, Best Picture, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, and The Zone of Interest. What's your thoughts on this? Because this is where I I give, give my big reveal. I feel like I'm bummed, really bummed Saltburn is not here. I'm kind of bummed May, December is not here. Um, I feel like those are two movies that really should be. Um, I, I just, I don't know what I would pull out other than I didn't like Killers of the Flower Moon and I didn't like Oppenheimer. But, like, I understand why they're there and I can recognize they're there. And I'm going to be honest, Oppenheimer's probably going to win the category. But it's like, I've not seen four of these films. Because my headset pulled out. Your headphones stopped working. Go ahead. Yeah, like, and I haven't seen four of the films. I haven't seen American Fiction yet. I haven't seen Anatomy of a Fall. I have not seen Past Lives fully yet. And I've not seen The Zone of Interest yet. So I'm like, I don't know what I would pull out of here to put in May, December or to put in Saltburn. But like, who knows? So I have seen every single one of these 10 films. I have been watching the winds of change happening over the last few weeks, the last few days as I'm recording this, I should say. I'm making a prediction right here, right now. And I know I'm going to be wrong. But I'm, I, I might be right. I actually, I'm probably more likely to be right than I have ever been. I think Barbie wins this category. Really? Yep. Because of everything that we've just talked about in Best Director and Best Picture, Best Actress. I think I'm not going to lie. There's a groundwell of support now to say, okay, Barbie is going to win. So Oppenheimer is going to take Best director in my opinion and i'm just putting that out there right now i don't know all the other categories this is the way i see that this is going to go on oscar night in march i think barbie takes top picture because of the ground wall of support that's saying you can't have barbie you can't have ken without barbie so we're going to give barbie the best picture and it's going to be kept out of every single one of the other categories Hence why I say this, because it got because it got put into adapted screenplay, not original screenplay. So Maestro is probably going to win original screenplay. Best adapted screenplay is probably going to be Oppenheimer. Barbie's going to take best picture. You don't think Anatomy of a Fall is going to win original? Nope. <clears throat> um, then or then they December. can say we don't have to give it to uh, Bradley Cooper for best actor. They don't have to give him to shit. He's been nominated nine times and they don't care to give him anything. I know, but this seems to be the year that everyone's going to get like a first win. Um, But that's the thing. I think Barbie is a strong contender for production and costumes. I think costumes is going to go to Poor Things. I also think Poor Things is, strong, is a strong contender. I don't know. I'm like, I haven't seen everything yet. So I'm very much like, I don't know where I stand on a lot of things. I would That's like just my to, major I mean, prediction. I, That's my prediction. If you were to ask me who I, who is going to win Best Picture right here, right now, I would say against all odds, it's going to be Barbie. I think with Barbie, it saved, I mean, Meryl Streep said it, it saved our jobs. It saved cinemas. People nope. flew out in numbers to go see Barbie. I disagree like, with that. No, Barbie's one of the highest grossing films. You can't disagree no, with no, the no, numbers. No, no, no. No, I disagree that it saved cinema. I think the only thing going for Barbie during that whole period, during July of last year, was the Oppenheimer-Barbie debate. But then Oppenheimer would also... More people decided, we're going to go see Barbie because you're putting... Christopher Nolan's trying to take the fact that a woman uh, woman director is destroying, is like attacking our ability to do whatever you want... I think the Oppenheimer Barbie debate, the Barbenheimer or whatever the fuck you want to call it, saved cinema in 2024. Three. Not just uh, Barbie. I don't know if I can co-sign that. I'm sorry. I There's mean, I think it's also like with... I disagree with. This is probably just another sure. one of the things that we can tick off the box and say Chris and Michael don't disagree on something. Uh, 
no, but I think I think I mean that's a real reason too to put Barbie as a possible winner here. Like that's why when everyone's like, "Why is Top Gun there?" and I think I initially said it when you look at the numbers, like, no, Top Gun actually saved a lot of movie theaters from closing after the pandemic. Like, and Barbie's one of the highest grossing films, and I think where I disagree is it really just transcends more than the than um the whole Oppenheimer thing. I think it really just was a well-received like block, like summer blockbuster that we haven't had in a long time. Like it it is the jaws of the 2020s. So why don't we create another category like the Golden Globes and call it the, the cinematic and box office achievement award. <laughs> I'm okay with that really really horrible when you say hey you're not best picture you're just the cinematic and box office achievement award you get the the second place of the Oscars but I don't even think it's second place I think I like that the Globes did that I think that it's a great way to nominate feature and showcase films that maybe aren't like the most artistic films but like did very well and were well received it gets people excited like maybe i didn't see barbie maybe i saw guardians of the galaxy and i loved that movie and i'm really bummed that like it's not in any kind of like picture category oh it's a box office success and that's not necessarily to say that you know barbie going barbie could have lost that and it still would have been an okay win because it was something people cared about it gets people watching the awards as it certainly wasn't for joe coy <laughs> oh joy joe 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 taking swipes left right and center you are no ricky gervais let's put it that way right. but hey we don't have to deal with anyone we have to deal with jimmy kimmel of the oscars this year so that's gonna be fun uh, um overall <laughs> uh it seems like this year is going to be pretty uneventful for us because we usually do our traditional Oscar pool, Oscar bet of who's going to win, who's not going to win. And it seems like we are well ahead than we were last year at this time when we were like, oh, we have like 90 movies that we have to watch in the next three three weeks. Um yeah, it's not so many. I'm also not watching Diane Warren's Flaming Hot. I'm just going to listen to the song. Oh, God, yeah. Well, that's what we did last year, too, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't have that. I don't have the energy, too. I'm sorry, <laughs> Diane Warren. She's the Susan Lucci, I feel. <laughs> She's the Susan Lucci that you... She, like, every year they put her song up, and I'm always confused. Because she's amazing. <laughs> I mean, Diane Warren's great, but, like, Miss Thing. Has she ever won? But hey, we did get, we might have an EGOT winner after this too. Whom? Jonathan Batista. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's going to win. I don't either, but I think it, it's cool that he's close now. Yeah. He's got his Grammy, yeah. Golden Globes. He's got his Emmy. He's awesome. He's amazing. Thanks for asking. Did he? No, actually, I think he actually did win. Has he Diane won? Warren has never, she won an honorary Academy Award. She's never actually won. Just like Angela Bassett. She Angela has 15 Dick. nominations, though. Angela Bassett has two. Diane Warren has 15 and has never won. To quote John Mulvaney, Angela, Angela Bassett who went, uh, getting nominated for a Marvel movie is like... <laughs> being a nominated for a Pulitzer for a Reddit thread. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I laughed so hard and then I cried and then I went, okay, I'm done. And then I went back to real world stuff. Um, okay. Uh, you wanted to talk about someone called Gypsy Rose. I don't know who the fuck this <laughs> is. Uh, I guess this is important to me. <laughs> I guess this is the thing that we talk about because, you know, why not talk about death after talking about the Oscars for 20 minutes or 40 minutes? We just talked about the Oscars for like an hour. And then what are we going to end on? My girl, Gypsy Rose Blanchard being free. Um, <laughs> I just want to make, I just want to make a prediction and I want to put it on the internet. I want to put it on Beyonce's internet right now. Yeah. So Taylor Swift's the internet, don't you know? I want to put it on Beyonce's internet. Gypsy Rose Blanchard is going to, in the next year, announce 
a run as Roxy Hart in Chicago. I'm predicting it. She had it coming. She yeah, it. I'm predicting it. Like she is, she's got this platform, and she's like, I'm gonna be real honest with you. She is be she's a really good advocate for everything right now. And she when she went on the uh, the view and was like, you know, if you're in this situation, we want to get you help. Don't go about it the way I did. And Joy Payer was like, well, no, it's fine. And she's like, murder is bad, Joy. It sent me. I just think she is a really, it's like a really interesting position she's in because the internet turned her into a influencer. She was in jail. She didn't know any of this. Like the internet has basically was like, no, this this woman is like got to be an influencer. And now there are, some of them are turning on her a little bit because she's not performing the way they want her to perform and, and acting the way they want her to act. But it's like they saw that TV series of somebody playing a dramatized version of her. They never actually saw her. And so it's it's just a whole very interesting psyche on like influencer and the internet and like I don't know I'm just she's fascinating as a human being um but I want to make the prediction she's going to be in Chicago within the next year as Roxy Hart eat your heart out Roxy I still I'm shook you don't know Gypsy Rose Blanchard I've got things to do like, I don't know who you're talking about. Like, you said based on a movie? Like, her life well, is so Gi- movie? So, no, so Gypsy Rose Blanchard, her mother basically, for had, she has, her mother had Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which meant that she kept imagining illnesses for Gypsy Rose and was lying to her and, like, being hyper abusive, like, forcing her to take all these medications and see all these doctors and was inventing all these diseases and was using it to get free things for herself and like free trips to Disney, free this, free that. And Gypsy tried to escape so many times, but like because of how severe the abuse was, she couldn't. So she met this gentleman on the internet and her and him were talking and she convinced this gentleman to kill her mother. And so he did. And then she got found out and the whole family, like when they ended up cremating the woman, the, the mother and the mother went the ashes went to the fa- the her family and the family's like i guess we're just gonna dump it down the bath like dump it in the toilet we don't like nobody was on this woman's side like it's like a really wild story um and they made a tv series a, a limited series yeah. hold on what is it called i think it was on hulu 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 blah 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 the act They call it the act. Yeah. It had a pretty good cast, too. Oh. The Oscar ceremonies is going to start an hour ahead of schedule this year. That's how important Gypsy Rose is to me. (laughs) That I was reading something else while you were talking. Uh, what's on the agenda for you for the next month besides watch catch it up on these movies so that way we can record at the end of this month to predict our winners and losers of the 2024. Do you have odds on favorite right now? Like, do you have odds on like on most of the categories? Because you've watched the majority of them. Are you because you're about the algorithm and all about the hey, this person won 12 different awards and this person won this independent film screen award and this person was this person had this person going on for them. Rude. Um, I have a couple, I have a couple that I'm, I think I'm going to be real. I think it would be a really powerful thing to have Lily Gladstone win, actress in a leading role. The first Native woman nominated and the first Native woman to win, um, especially after the Academy, how they have treated Native women in the past. I think that it's, and I'm going to be honest too, I haven't seen Anatomy of a Fall, but Lily Gladstone was a full fucking, I hated that movie. She was incredible, that whole movie. Um, I feel like Oppenheimer has cleaned up a lot of these categories too. Oh, a lot I of think the like, production uh, one, yeah. Not even production, no. I think like 
uh, directing Best Picture. I think he's a strong contender and leading actor and and supporting, I think, is a strong contender. Like, there's just, like, a lot of... I think Oppenheimer's going to be the Dune. It's going to win a lot of awards this year. But Dune didn't win Best Picture and Best Director. No, it did not. So... That's why hold out hope. You never know. Um, what's on the agenda for you besides that? Besides uh, watching movies and making sure you're ready for Oscar predictions 2024 coming to you on February 28th. That's right, February 29th, I mean, because it's a leap year this year. So we're going to be recording on February 28th <laughs> and be releasing it on February 29th for the Oscars to be on March 10th. You're putting a real big timeline on my life. Oh, God, yes. Because if I don't, then we never record anything because, God forbid, we actually be able to, like, match up our fucking calendars once in 2024. For those who don't, who are still with us after Chris has been basically dropping the F-bomb every five seconds, um, we have been trying to record this probably for the last, like, three weeks. Probably actually since, like, February 3rd, we started to try to put this on the calendar. It was before the the Globes. It was right before the Globes. We were like, hey, let's do one right after the Globes. And then that became, let's do one right after the Screen Actors Guild nominations come out. And then it was like, hey, I've got like, I'm an old man now. So I'm breaking bones and have to go to physiotherapy. <laughs> so don't put my business on Beyonce's internet like that. Oh, I, oh, I'm sorry. We can talk about my radiation treatments, my cancer <laughs> treatments, but God forbid people know that you have to go to physiotherapy because you're an old 30 year old man in upstate my New York. Kneecaps are, my kneecaps are fleeing from their position. That happened to me after a football accident in university. So don't even try. You had patella formella? I had ACL, PCL, and MCL all torn. My cartilage, cartilage is torn. Oh, I don't have it torn. Life. I have something oh. called patella formella. So my kneecaps are just like going boop, 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 and don't want to be in the right spot. Oh, I just wake up from time to time and my kneecaps on the side of my leg. Oh, no, so I, I don't to, have that. So I have to pop it back into place in like probably about four or five times a week. Ew. That's what happens when you play football and you decide. I don't do sports. I I know. God forbid. You actually, you know. I do theater. That's kind of like a, no, it's not even like Chris. It can be. It is brutal. (laughs) Um, It depends on if I get cast in the show I'm auditioning for. Um, Into the Woods. Who are you playing? Rumpelstiltskin? I don't know yet. I would like to be the baker or Jack. Um... Because I know I can do a better job than James Corden. This is a puppy dog. My puppy's decided to come join us and look at me because God forbid we actually, well, I've been in meetings all day. Anyway, anyway, well, good luck. Break a leg. But I Thank actually you. don't, don't break a leg because you know, that Thank means you, you have to go to physical therapy. Um, <clears throat> break an arm. Jesus. You don't need an arm to do your job. Uh, sort of. What are you doing? What's up? What's happening? What's the vibe? I don't know. What are you doing? Anyway. No, uh, where are you going? What are you doing this next month, this year, this life? What am I doing? Uh, I got yeah. work. I got work. I have to go to Lloydminster. I'm uh, getting ready to go up to Grand Prairie to go watch the Alberta Winter Games. So I've got that on the agenda. Then I am getting ready for my travels in March, April, and May. So I've got to start preparing for that, making sure my projects are in. Uh, the launch of the cross Interview Season 6 comes out on February 5th. So if you are not watching that, if you like to listen to me talk to municipal councillors, you know, with a lot less F-bombs and a lot, me, lot less me throwing Michael under the bus, <laughs> head over to the cross border interviews and uh, check that out uh our new website is launching in 2024 so be checking out for that uh the no not them website is going to be launching so be sure to check out that when that does come out uh we're going to be doing uh, i'm going to be doing some more uh entertainment reporting in some sense i'm going to be putting up some uh reviews from some movies and books that i read throughout 2024 and well movies i watch not read because you can't read a book you read a movie you can read a book but you can't read movie <laughs> yeah um, you're struggling <laughs> you've been in meetings all day i have been in meetings all day and i have another one at seven o'clock tonight so you know um seven o'clock my time it's like five o'clock your time so blah 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 Sorry, i'm blah. like hello um and then uh so that's gonna be launching in la- middle of february maybe michael will be contributing to that probably throughout the weeks as well peter <laughs> for those who 
don't watch this and actually do, uh, you know, listen. Um, that was Michael's attempt to try to make it sound like he's going to do something, which is not going to be the case because he went. I did a thumbs up. No, I'll do it. I'll just do theater. I can do reviews, but my reviews are going to be unhinged. If you read my Goodreads, I've been starting to do the reviews there and they're just unhinged. I also read. Okay. We have to level here. If you want book reviews from me, I read a lot of smut. Isn't that all that's get published these days? If you if you look no. at book Instagram for fuck's sakes, it's all smut, smut, smut. Oh, you gotta read this. If you read this, you should read this because it's more smutty than this smut. Um, I must say though, the Dark Olympus series this is good smut. This is really good smut. This the is si all... the sixth and... book just came out. And for those who are watching, you can back that show. You can back the No Not Them show from now on. Uh, you can go over to the No Not Them once we actually do have it up and running. Uh, head over, get an exclusive behind the scenes look at what's going on, what's coming up on the show, some of our comments, and yes, maybe from time to time, some of my great analogies of how crappy movies are in 2024 compared to what they were like in the 18, 18, 18. 1980s um speaking of that i just watched girls 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 with elvis presley that movie does not hold up in 2024 compared no. to what it was um what else did i watch what else have i been doing you hating on movies ground oh I've been, I've been playing pokemon a lot lately i don't know why i've been playing pokemon a lot so i don't know what that's all about i haven't even downloaded the downloadable extended content because i got it sent to me and i haven't even used it yet but what I have been doing is playing Pokemon Go. So if you play Pokemon Go and you really want to have someone who plays on a daily basis, send a message to me because I play on a regular basis. And why not? Because, you know, I've got nothing else to do between meetings except sit in my fucking basement and play Pokemon Go. What else is going on? Um, I've been walking my dog lately. That's been fun. That's been overly exciting. And Sid, how are you? You just took like, oh, I don't even know where that was. We just went on a journey with you, all of us. Wouldn't be the first time. I love the last of 2024. Obsessed. Work. Work, Diva. Okay. Well, with that, um, he has been <laughs> oh. Mike Nichols. I have not been Chris Brown, the R&B singer. I was going to say Chris Brown, the EGOT winner, but that's never going to happen. <laughs> that's never going to get it. Never going to get it. Never like how Mike gonna Nichols get... is never going to be an R&B singer. Um, as always, Michael, it has been a pleasure and a honor to sit down with you and talk about the entertainment industry as two people who are white, gay, only can, and not the people who you're thinking of. This has been No, Not Them. Peace out. Ah. Uh, ASMR. Whisper. No.